In this video I'll introduce you to my new DCTL pack called Look Lab Print. It's crafted to recreate the look and feel of film. The pack includes DCTLs for negative film looks, a lab DCTL for additional adjustments and a film print emulation DCTL for final touches. It's a straightforward set of tools designed to recreate the aesthetics of film. DaVinci provides a range of film print emulation LUTs designed to enhance your footage with the rich qualities of film. The catch with these film print emulation LUTs is that they are optimized for scans of negative film rather than digital camera footage. That is why I designed the look details. The goal of these details is to transform Ari Log C footage to mirror the qualities of well-known film stock like for example the Kodak Vision 3 250D. They establish a foundational look, a starting point, from which the image can then be further modified. In the next step, I developed a DCTL named Lab for further image refinement. This DCTL features sliders in the upper half for tonal adjustments, including exposure, lift gamma gain, contrast and pivot, followed by sliders dedicated to fine-tuning the colors. One distinctive aspect of film is the film contrast curve. I recently came across the Filmlight Baselight presentation video about Chromogen. I will link to the video in the video description. Around the 17 minute mark they talk about their contrast boost tool designed to create a film-like curve. The curve will steepen contrast in the midtones enhancing details in critical areas such as facial features. It then gracefully tapers off in the highlights, emulating the classic aesthetic of film. For this video demonstration only, I temporarily changed the order of operations in the detail to show that it's possible to create a similar curve using adjustments like contrast, pivot, gamma and gain. Tools every colorist is familiar with. When we look at the shape of the curve, it suggests that highlights could be lowered. However, real-world footage analysis using the waveform vector scope shows that the highlights remain unchanged. The contrast boost doesn't lower highlights. Instead, it enhances the contrast in the midtones and creates a pleasing highlight roll-off. For the final DCTL, I align the order with DaVinci's native tools leading to most pleasing results. By selecting Show Tone Curve, we observe enhanced contrast in the midtones and a smooth roll-off to the highlights. Now let's look at the sliders for adjusting saturation and density. The first slider adjusts saturation similar to the standard saturation tool you'd find in DaVinci. When you move this slider, this makes the color not just more intense, but also slightly brighter. In addition to the classic saturation slider, I've incorporated an additional saturation slider that operates in a subtractive, film-like manner. Additionally, there are separate density sliders for red, green and blue. These sliders reduce luminance while ensuring the U remains saturated. I've included density adjustments only for red, green and blue because hues like yellow usually stay bright and vibrant in film, closely aligning with film sensitivity to primary colors. We can see this in movies like Battle of the Sexes, La La Land and Curse of the Golden Flower. By not having density sliders for yellow, cyan and magenta, we prevent the darkening or muting of those hues, preserving their natural brightness and vibrancy. Moving on to the deep slider. This slider impacts subtractive saturation and density adjustments. As the value of the deep slider increases, it excludes the highlights from being affected. Here are some examples where we can see that without the deep slider, the skin experiences greater changes. However, by increasing the deep slider and thereby excluding the influence on highlights, we achieve a more pleasing image.
Next, the DZ Highlight Slider. Film highlights can have a unique quality where intense light results in lower saturation, a feature that digital sensors cannot naturally reproduce. The DZ Highlight Slider is designed to mimic this aspect of film behavior, allowing digital footage to achieve a similar aesthetic quality. Now let's discuss the two-strip process. The two-strip Technicolor process was an early technique in color filmmaking, using red and green filters to capture two primary colors. By pushing the slider to 100% and increasing the saturation sliders as well, we mimic the classic two-strip effect. Here's a scene from the aviator on the left and our recreation of the look on the right side. This slider can also be beneficial when used more gently. Adjusting it to 30 or 50% can assist in creating a complementary color scheme, such as the orange and teal look visible in movies like Silence. When we look at the trace in the vector scope, we observe a reduced color palette. Here's a behind the scenes image where we can see a fuller range of colors. First, I use the offset tool to balance the image and increase the subtractive saturation slider. Now I'll move the two strip slider up to 50%, pushing the greens more towards cyan. You can see that this adjustment makes it easy to achieve a similar look. Here on the left side is the original look from the movie and on the right our recreation of that look. Let's move on to the bleach bypass look, a film processing technique that produces images with enhanced contrast and muted colors by skipping the bleaching step during development. This effect was utilized in Minority Report as illustrated here. I'm working with this footage and by adjusting the bleach bypass slider we can easily achieve a similar look. The last DZTL in the pack is the print DZTL. This DZTL allows you to select the Kodak and Fuji film print emulation LUTs that come free with DaVinci. The DZTL enables you to adjust the color and luminosity of the LUT separately. The color slider specifically influences the image colors, altering hues, saturation and the color balance, without affecting the brightness or contrast. Following that, the luminosity settings impact the image's brightness and contrast adjusting the lightness and darkness without altering the colors. Lowering the luminosity allows us to create a flat film look. Here first a scene from the movie Spencer, followed by a recreation using footage from Artgrid. I've also added sliders to fine tune shadows and here's why. So for demonstration I will apply a film print LUT to a grayscale image and the LUT will elevate the black levels. The print DZTL offers the flexibility to modify shadows post LUT application. It allows us to reduce the black levels and individually adjust red, green and blue shadow values for achieving rich neutral blacks. It is also straightforward to tint the shadows towards red or blue depending on the look we aim to create. The looks are tailored to Ari C footage. Here we are working with footage from Blackmagic, so my advice is to start your notary with the color space transform. This will convert your footage from the Blackmagic color space to Ari C. 
In the final note I'll insert a print detail and in the first note the look detail. Between them I will place a lab detail to fine tune the look. If you want to add more notes it's best to do so between the lab and print detail. For a bit of fun, here I'm working with a log image that Steve Yedlin shared on Twitter some time ago. I've applied a print detail and a negative film look. I make a slight adjustment to the saturation in the lab detail. Activating the utility detail at the timeline level reveals that my skin tone levels align more closely with the skin tone line, whereas Steve Yedlin's look tends to shift more towards green. To address this, I add a note, slightly adjust the offset to push the tones more towards green and tweak the highlights a bit. Achieving a 100% match isn't the goal here. Here I've set up shortcuts to toggle between each note using period and comma, so I can easily switch between each detail. The setup allows me to experiment and craft various looks very easily. For more information please visit my website where you will find also a free demo version and if you have any further questions feel free to leave a comment or email me. That's it. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and see you next time.